Monday, March 12th. I'm your host, Sarah Beal. On today's show, we talk to School Counseling Department Head Jen Clark, then we chat with Four C's Admissions Director Matt Cormier, and finally we head out to the Katuit Library. But first, let's get a look at today's top headlines. As part of Vineyard Wind's ongoing dialogue with local communities, they have scheduled a community meeting for Butters to the project tonight, March 12th at 5.30 p.m. in the auditorium of Barcelona High School. The meeting will be moderated by Town Councilor Britt Brit Biedenbender. Please visit vineyardwind.com for more information. The Department of Public Works invites interested individuals to attend a public information meeting regarding planned improvements along portions of C Street and Ocean, View Ave Ocean Avenue in Hyannis. The meeting will be held at 7 p.m. on Wednesday, March 21st at the Hyannis Transportation Center. The purpose of this meeting is to provide residents an opportunity to review the proposed improvements prior to final design and to learn about the proje projected time frame for construction. Construction is planned to start in the fall of 2018 and is anticipated to continue through 2019. Now let's get our BHS update from intern Mackenzie Connor. Hello, I'm Mackenzie Connor, intern for Channel 18. There's a lot going on at Barnesville High School this week. If you're still looking for a prom dress, come to the Junior Senior Cafeteria on March 29th from 2 to 4.30. There will be a collection of over 300 gently used prom and cocktail dresses for students to take for free. The Student Council and Cape Cod Healthcare Spring Blood Drive will take place on Monday, March 12th from 8 a.m. to 1 p.m. in the Knight Auditorium. In order to participate, students must be at least 16, complete a permission slip, and choose a specific time to donate. Permission slips and the sign-up sheet can be found outside room 1701. The Celebration Committee has acquired the month of March for another bottle and can drive at the transfer station in Marston's Mills. This is a great opportunity to ensure money for the class of 2019 and get some community service hours. For those interested, please go to the Barnesville High School website to sign up. Spring registration is now open on Family ID. Please make sure to register by March 16th to be eligible to try out for spring sports. That's all for today. Thanks for watching. I'm Mackenzie Connor. Coming up, our visit to Katuit Library and our chat with Admissions Director at 4Cs, Matt Cormier. But first, we learn about the new school schedule at Barnesville High School with School Counseling Department Head, Jen Clark. Jen, thank you so much for joining us today. I know you were just here a few weeks ago, but now that the new schedule has officially been approved by the school committee, I wanted to have you back in to kind of go a little bit more into it and talk about some of the changes. Um, the first thing I want to talk about is the, the one I think one of the biggest changes is the seven selection student schedule. Mm -hmm. So the students are going to be able to have seven courses right. that they are taking. Mm -hmm. And one of the most interesting things I found about it was there's going to be a new thing. Uh, classes are going to be offered by semester. Right. So it'll be like a half year course, mm -hmm. which I think is really interesting. What can you just say about the, uh, the seven courses in the, the semesters? Sure. So this is something that we've been working towards for six or seven years now. And, um, you know, based on research we've done with colleges and other high schools and, you know, student needs and students as well. Um, we just, we really felt that it was really important that students be able to choose seven courses. And um, so we have, so some of the traditional courses will be full year, English, math, a lot of those languages will be full year courses. Mm -hmm. But we are also able to offer a lot more, like you said, semester courses. So we were able to just really increase the diversity of our program of studies, kind of, um, you know, deepen and expand um, our offerings for students. So it, we're really able to meet the diverse needs of all of our students. Mm -hmm. You know, the counselors have just started scheduling students for next year, and it's been really exciting because this, for the first time since I've been at Barnesville High School, like kids are really excited about their schedules for next year mm -hmm. because they really get to tailor it towards their interests and their needs. And they're taking all kinds of amazing courses to challenge themselves and to really meet their needs. So it's, it's, a, it's a great opportunity for students. Wonderful. I know one of the changes that's happening is that they're now going to be on a six-period schedule. Um, and while they're taking seven courses, right. 
So not every class is going to meet every day, but right. there are some extended period classes mm -hmm. that are, I think, 74 minutes Correct. long, mm -hmm. and there's 50-minute classes and 55-minute right. classes. Right. So it's really going to give them a little bit more flexibility. Yeah, and it's, and it's not, you know, it's, it's interesting because the schedule, it's not that different than our current schedule. Right now we have a six-period um, schedule, so it's a six-drop one. So um, students see, have five classes per day. Mm -hmm. Next year they're going to have six classes per day, and they'll drop one or two each day, and it's a set five, five fixed, um, a five fixed day schedule. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Um, I know one of the big changes that kind of brought this forward was the mass core requirements. Right. Um, I'm going to go over those real quick because I find them very interesting. Mass core is going to require, and as of class of 2020, they will be fully integrated into the system. Right. So the mass core requires four years of English and math, three years of a lab based science, three years of history, two years of the same language, mm -hmm. one year of arts, and that include, and then the five additional core courses. Right. So this kind of helps you bring that that full mass core requirement into Barksville High School. Right. So we had so we integrate so we slowly integrated mass core each year. We kind of we we, in, we increased the mass core requirements for each each um, grade and as you said in the with the class of 2020 it'll be fully integrated. Um, so students were were meeting the mass core requirements but it was limiting their other options. Right. And so we were just producing more and more homogenous schedules. And that wasn't really meeting the students' needs mm -hmm. for when they were in high school and for when they leave. You know, colleges want to see students who, um, you know, have, who are very diverse and have, you know, a, a broad range of experiences and, mm -hmm. and, and, and businesses and employers do too. So, you know, we weren't really meeting the needs of our students. So that was one of the reasons we were really been advocating for the seven period schedule. Mm -hmm. It'll produce a more well-rounded student. Right, exactly. And, yeah. and, meet, and meet their individual needs. And mm -hmm. that's really what we want to do. Wonderful. Um, Part of this, you know, bringing the, the having the exp expanded schedule is there's a few things that are able to happen. There's going to be SAT prep, right. which will be mm -hmm. offered as mm -hmm. a course, which I think, and it, it'll be free. I mean, right now you can get SAT prep. It's after school. You have to pay extra money right. for it. So the fact that there'll be a course available for right. students for SAT prep, I think that's just amazing. We this we are very excited about it. the school counseling department and um, the and the department leaders are very excited about that to be able to really. Um, make sure our students are really prepared for the SAT. You know, most of the research shows that um, student scores increase with some kind of prep. Mm -hmm. And if we can provide that opportunity for our students, that just that really helps to support their their options when they leave high school. Mm -hmm. SAT is such a you know, it's such a core part of, you know, high school and if you're continuing your education right. afterwards. So I think it's great that all the students at Barnesville High School will have the option to mm -hmm. have that, you know, a little bit of a leg up when they go to take right. their, their SAT. Um, another thing that's changing this year is um, DECA, which mm -hmm. is, I know, has expanded and had grown over right. the past few years. It's a, it's a club right. and now you'll be able to offer courses that support the DECA club, which is kind of like a business entrepreneurship yep. type of club. Right. I mean, and that, that club has just grown exponentially. You know, it's and it's super popular and our students are doing really amazing things at the competitions and doing great. Um, but in order to in order to um, have that club in order, you know, with a national um, organization, we had to have courses to support that. And so they were kind of letting us do that without the courses in place. But now we're going to have entrepreneurship and marketing. We have um, economics and finance already in place. So we have some courses, but we really needed to expand those offerings for students in order to be, be able to maintain our, our um, membership with DECA. It's amazing that a club, yeah. you know, kind of steered the, the course, you know, adding courses in because, and, and the kids, I remember uh, Sarah Mandel, who used to work her, here, her daughter, Emma, was so involved in DECA mm -hmm, right. and would just absolutely loved it and it really, you know, fostered that the excitement that she had for that kind of work. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so great that you've responded to that need, that want, because the club has is grown and I know our intern Mackenzie has talked about, you know, how how because she's also involved in DECA. Mm -hmm. I mean it's like I don't think there's a kid that I've met recently that isn't involved right. in DECA. Right. There's yeah. so many yeah. students yeah. that are taking part in that. So I mm -hmm. love that, that that response was made to to support that. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It really is. It yeah. is. And the last thing I want to talk about is the Project Lead the Way because mm -hmm. I know that's also part of this new course offerings and kind of supports all of this. Right. So last year we applied for and received a grant for um, Project Lead the Way um, in um, 
in engineering. And Project Lead the Way is a national um, curriculum, a national uh, program, and it's connected with College Board and AP. And so um, it is a very, it's rigorous curriculum and it is very um, structured. And we start, we have our first class that is running this year mm -hmm. of, of um, Introduction to Engineering Design. And then um, next year, those students will be able to take the next course, which is um, Principles of Engineering. And then we've also added another pathway of Project to Lead the Way, which is in computer science. So students will have the opportunity to take um, computer science essentials. And then all of those courses lead, can, can, they can um, lead to different branches of those particular areas. So students, after this, these engineering classes, they can go into mechanical engineering or environmental engineering, other types of engineering. Um, and the students who do the computer science path can go on to other types of computer science and then and including AP computer science. So, um, and Project Lead the Way is, is a um, program that is recognized and valued um, by colleges. So, you know, when we have that on our transcripts, they certainly know what it is and know that students have received a quality and rigorous instruction. Wonderful. Yep. I think all of these changes are just really setting up Barnesville students to just, and, and Barnesville High School to be, uh, you know, desirable, you know, students will become desirable to colleges right. and Barnesville High School will become desirable to students coming to Barnesville right. High School. There's so many choices now in the Cape and I think all of these changes are gonna make Barnesville High School really stand out as because of school choice right. and there's so many options to the students who already live in the town. So I'm really excited to hear all about the, all yeah. these new changes and I hope everything goes extremely well. Thanks, Sarah, we're really excited too. Thank Great. you. Thank you for coming in and talking to us You're about welcome. this today. Right. My guest today is Jen Clark. She's the School Counseling Department Head at Barnesville High School. Matt, thank you so much for joining us today. Um, I know that a lot of colleges are on spring break and this is kind of a good time maybe for some of those students that are maybe coming home for spring break to think about maybe taking a course at Four Seas this summer. Definitely. That's um, we, something that we have happened quite a bit at the college where students are maybe at another school, they want to get ahead in their program, or they need to retake a class for some reason. They come to Four Seas and they can take that class over our summer. That's wonderful. Yeah. What kind of classes do you offer in the summertime? Is it you know just like you do in the, in the fall and the spring semesters? We offer a wide variety of classes. So English classes, psychology classes, even some of our sciences um, with chemistry and anatomy and physiology. There's a lot more than that, um, but yeah, we have a, a lot of options for students. Wonderful. What, is, what would be the process be like for a student that maybe is going to another college or university, you know, anywhere in the United States and mm -hmm. They're either visiting here for the summer or they're from here and they're and you know, what what's the how does it work to, you know, take these courses? Yeah, so we try to make it as simple as possible for people. So the biggest thing is for students to check with their college to make sure they'll accept our credits. Once they get that approval from their home institution, they can come into the college with a copy of their transcript and we can get them signed in for their class. And they, you know, they're not going for a degree program, so they're not going to get a fina uh, any financial aid for that one class that they might take over the summer. Mm -hmm. But they will still be eligible to have it transferred back to their home institution as long as they verify that first. Right, and they don't have to apply right. to four C's. Like uh, they don't have to go through the whole application process. Right, right. It's it's as simple as coming to the advising center with a copy of their transcript and signing up for a class or two. Wonderful. What mm -hmm. is the cost for? you know, someone that's interested in taking a summer course. And do the courses run, do you have shorter courses, longer courses? How mm -hmm. what are the course lengths like? So the, we offer um, three different summer options. We offer the full summer, which starts in May and ends in uh, late August. And then we have uh, summer one and summer two. And those go from about May to um, July, and then from July to uh, August, so some quicker terms as well. Mm -hmm. And there, so students could do like English Composition 1 and 2 over the summer oh, wow. uh, if they wanted to. Um, as far as the other question, I can't remember. Cost. I'm sorry. Cost, yes. yes. <laughs> so sorry about that. No, it's okay. Cost is $189 per credit okay. uh, for a Massachusetts resident. If somebody's not a Massachusetts resident, say they're visiting from out of state somewhere, it's $395 per credit. Okay. Typically, um, classes are three credits, uh, except if you're doing a science with a lab, those are usually four credits. Mm -hmm. 
So it's a pretty good savings if you think about it, and you can get one, you know, one or two of your your requirements for your college taken care of over the summer. Kind of gets you a little bit ahead, and like you said, it's good for students if they or if they want to take a class to, you know, maybe get a little bit further ahead, or if someone has to retake a course. Exactly. Which ha which happens, you mm -hmm. know. It's in college. You know, sometimes when people go to college, it's a little it's a little daunting. It's a little bit more difficult than they expect. Maybe you didn't get that grade that you really wanted to. Mm -hmm. It's be a good way to like kind of bump up your GPA. Exactly, and it can even work for high school students too. Um, we offer dual enrollment programs where students can be enrolled in high school and still come and take classes with us over the summer. Oh, that's so great. while they're off and get a head start and maybe take the first level course. Um, and have it count towards their high school degree and their college degree. So oh, that's it's an cool. option for them too. I didn't even think of that. You yeah. know, high school students could come in and do the dual enrollment over the summer when they definitely probably have a little bit more time than they do during this regular school year. Exactly. That's yeah. great. You yeah. know, there's so many opportunities at 4Cs. Yes. Um, we want to talk, so this is summer registration. If if students wanted to, if can people start their 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 college career at Four Seas over the summer? Do they have to wait for the fall semester? So say someone wants to go to Four Seas, mm -hmm. can they start in the summertime? They can. Okay. So they, they can start and fill out an application for the fall semester, but they can start taking some classes earlier in the um, summer if they'd like to. Oh great, because yeah. that was going to lead to my next question, which is fall semester, mm -hmm. you know, getting people signed up. What's the application process like to enter Cape Cod Community College? We, again, we try to make it as simple as pro possible for students. Mm -hmm. So we have an online application. The online application can be found right on our homepage. It's um, a little red button on the top of our homepage. That's www.capecod.edu. And students will fill out the application and if they want to send us transcripts, they can from their high school. And we'd also love them to send transcripts from any college or university that they may have attended. Because mm -hmm. credits never go bad, so they can always get those if the grades were good enough to transfer in. And then after we receive the transcripts and the application, we accept the student to the college. So and they can be ready to either do placement tests if they need to, which is where they can see what level they're at, or they can even uh, go right in and pick classes Wonderful. for the fall. Yeah. I think that's a good thing to, to kind of reiterate is that college credits don't go bad. Let's yes. talk a little bit about that. Because yeah. say you have someone that maybe went to college in the 60s. Mm -hmm. If they're still able to get those transcripts, which they should be able to do, yep. those credits should still count towards it, their degree. Yeah, as long as it's from an accredited college or university, it, sh it should definitely transfer in. That's wonderful. So it's something we can always work with on a, with a student individually um, and be able to go with the, the registrar at the college and myself in admissions and we'd be happy to work with people to help them figure out what can transfer in. Oh, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. I think that's so great because there's a lot of people I'm sure that, you know, are interested in maybe going back to school that they haven't been in a while, but they're a little nervous. It's been a while. Yep. They're, you know, they're like, I don't want to retake all those classes. I already took right. you know way back when right. so that's that's great that that's able to happen and I think that's important that we make sure people are aware of that definitely college credits don't expire yes yes yeah <laughs> yep. no, that's a good thing wonderful Matt yeah. is there anything else you want to tell our viewers about before I let you go um, if anybody else uh, you're or if anybody else would like to contact me you're always willing to contact the office the admissions office at 774-330-4311 and uh, any one of uh, the counselors in the office would be happy to help out. Wonderful. Yeah. Matt, thank you so much for talking to us all about admissions, especially coming up for this summer semester. Yes, thank you. I appreciate it. Yes. My guest today is Matt Cormier, who's the Director of Admissions at Cape Cod Community College. Antonia, thank you so much for letting us come out and join you here at the Ketuit Library. Absolutely. Um, so much to talk about. The Ketuit Library is, you know, one of the seven village libraries, um, and it, it, there, I, f I find them all to be very unique. What are some of the, you know, most unique things that you think about Ketuit Library? Well, one of the things that we do specialize in is tech help. Uh, so if you have computer issues or if you have issues with your mobile device, your tablet, you can set up an appointment here with our programming technology and outreach coordinator, Gus Aslanian, and he will give you half hour sessions and you're allowed to come back. <laughs> um, plus, we also do an outreach program at the Barnstable Senior Center on Tuesdays at 1.30 during uh, most of the year. We don't do it in the summer. And we offer classes on how to uh, use Google Mail or Facebook for seniors. Uh, we will do individual tech help, you know, 15 minute appointments for people to come in. Um, so that way, people who can come to us, 
easily, we can do it here. Um, and if you can't make it to Katuit, you have an, another opportunity at the Senior Center. And one of the things that we've been talking about with the uh, director at the Senior Center is offering occasional evening versions of that class because there are some people who um, can't make it during the day. So we're trying to um, make it more accessible for more people. That's wonderful. I love that you partner with the Senior Center to offer yeah. that. Um, I know as someone who has parents that are slightly technologically, <laughs> you know, not as advanced as some, I often get phone calls, how do I do this, how do I do that? So what a great tool here at the Katua Library as well as being able to go to the Senior Center be able to help them. Yeah, and I always tell them, you know, you don't have to remember everything that we've told you. Mm -hmm. Here's the card, you call us, here are the notes that we went over. And then I always say to them, I can teach anybody except for my mother. And maybe Gus feels the same way, but I'm not sure. <laughs> you have to ask him. <laughs> right, right. Uh, along with that kind of technology, you also have been doing, which I think is great, um, over February vacation, you had coding camps, and you're going to be doing that again in April, as well as in the summertime, which I think is amazing, because yeah. it's such a huge thing now. So this is our attempt to uh, introduce technology or uh, computational thinking to the much younger groups. So we, we even had kids as young as four last summer when we did it. Wow. And instead of having them in front of a computer doing, you know, a lot of them are already familiar with Minecraft and things like that, mm -hmm. but they don't really understand what it is that they're doing with that. So we introduce concepts like an algorithm, a program, a function using analog means. So they do um, sort of arts and crafts things with beads, they get a chance to um, do things. We have a little wooden robot called Cubetto that we can code with. Um, they get to pretend that they're robots themselves and they have to come up with the instructions and have another one of their classmates come in and be the robot and try and build a cup structure, for example. So they're getting these uh, this vocabulary and, mm -hmm. and these concepts um, brought to them in a really hands-on way that doesn't actually have anything to do with the computer. Yeah. Um, and this, this particular week that we just did, we've had uh, seven young boys uh, joining it and they've been having a great time and I'm exhausted. I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> But that's so great. It's a new way to think about it. It's like, because like you said, they're used to those electronics, using the computer, using an iPad, using a tablet or what, what have you, but doing it in a more practical sense and, and using that, you know, critical thinking about how this all works. I think that's yeah, important. Yeah, and it's, it's a form of literacy. So, you know, we, we, do, we do as much as we can to uh, improve and introduce literacy. Obviously, uh, reading is, you know, the standard, but right. digital literacy is important. And, it it's is. A, and it's important not just to be able to use machines and computers, but to also understand the language. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Uh, another thing that you do here at Katuit Library, which I absolutely love, is you do a lot of stargazing events. And not just stargazing events, you also have telescopes that you have available for people to check out. True. So if you're interested in the stars and what's up there, yeah, it's this is the library for you. Absolutely. We get uh, the the Ketteliers are very kind in allowing us to come out to Lowell Park um, when you know when nothing's going on there from April through October. And we go out once a month and bring uh, our giant telescope. And we often have um, a person helping us, uh, Jim and Mike are people that help us. And uh, they will bring their telescopes as well. And people get a chance to see uh, the moon. It's amazing mm -hmm. what the moon looks like through a telescope. And uh, Saturn and, and the Jupiter, because you can see four of the moons of Jupiter. And it's just, it's, people are so awed by that. And it's just a nice night out. Now, unfortunately, last fall, the last three months, the weather did not cooperate. <laughs> no, <it didn't. laughs> but, you know, it's a good way if you decide to come out, take a look at it, and then if you want to um, borrow the telescope yourself to come on out. Yeah, so. I think it's really something. It's To see those celestial objects through a telescope is so different than seeing, you know, a picture of it. Exactly. Because it's like you're actually looking at it. I it's know. not just a picture that somebody took God knows when. It's, you're looking through the, the eye hole and it's, there it is. It's, yeah. and it's, we, it's we, amazing. The best one is Saturn. Oh my gosh, it really does have rings. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just so amazing. Yeah. So it's so wonderful that you do that. Um, talking about literacy, you know, mm -hmm. this is a library, so there's, you know, it is books and reading and things like that. You do do 
uh, story hours as well yep. as There's your children's library and does a lot too. Yeah, so there, she has two story hours that she does um, in the library, so Tuesday mornings and Wednesday afternoons. And then she goes out once a month to uh, different preschools and also to Angel House and does literacy programs there. So we do a bit of outreach because, you know, a lot of children these days are not at home. They are um, in preschool because their parents are both working. So mm -hmm. this is a way for us to sort of um, remind parents or, you know, remind the people that they're, the library is around and give them a positive library experience, even mm -hmm. if they can't always make it to us like they might have. But we also do have homeschooling parents that bring their kids in um, for the story hours that are here, too. Oh, that's great. So, you know, it's a good mix and we can adapt things if somebody has a, um, you know, a theme that they're working on that week. We could do story hours that have something to do with that, and, and they're always followed by a craft as well. So, yeah. Who doesn't love crafts? Yeah. And then the, this summer reading will be coming up sooner than you can oh, I know. believe. And so there'll be a lot. And this year's theme is about music, so oh, there should be some good programs. That's really fun. I love the summer program, and all the libraries kind of mm -hmm. follow the same tone and the same theme. So that's really exciting to hear yeah. about. Um, adult library uh, things like uh, book clubs. Yes, we have four book clubs. Wow. Yeah, so I know so <laughs> it's a busy place. It is. Uh, we have an adult sketching group that comes in, um, and you know they and they sometimes sketch the mother of the children's librarian, which is really great. You know, they sit in here and they do that. Um, <laughs> we have uh, people that come and play bridge and teach others to play bridge. We've had the mahjong group and they teach. It's a teaching group, not just a playing group. Right. So new people can come and learn about it. Nice. Um, we have groups that meet monthly, like the. Uh, brain Injury uh, Support Group of Massachusetts meets here monthly basis. Uh, so there's all kinds of things like that too. And the Historical Society does their Katuit Chronicles here. Um, you know, so there's always stuff going on. And I just did want to add that um, a lot of the little programs that we've been doing, like the Coding Camp and the Royston Nash Music Appreciation Series mm -hmm. that we've been doing, those have been supported by grants. So we've had, a, you know, great input from um, the Massachusetts Board of Library Commissioners for the coding and then um, the Arts Foundation of Cape Cod and the Mid-Cape Cultural Council and the uh, Town of Barnstable's Kirkman Fund have been very supportive for s some of that programming, this music programming in particular. So That's wonderful. Yeah. I think that's great that you had that Royce the Nash music program. Um, it was a different, you know, different kind of thing to have at a library, but yeah. I mean, libraries aren't just books anymore. Absolutely and not. That's and, definitely and something I say you want people to know. Our, one of our currencies is programs. You know, we, we put on programs as well as provide reading material and audiovisual material and of course, 24-7 Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> you can come sit out on the step at 2 o'clock in the morning and use can. the Wi-Fi, and, no problem. You know, we really want to try and make that space a little bit um, more comfortable so that when people come and sit in the summer, we're going to try and get something where there's a little bit more comfortable chairs and maybe a work table. Oh, nice. Because people do. They come and they sit out there and use the Wi-Fi. So. Yeah. And you're right next to the them. lovely park next oh, door. Yeah. I mean, yeah. the Stuart Library is kind of in an ideal spot. You can walk yeah. to the beach. You can use the park. You can come to the library. It's play on the playground. Play on the playground. The church helps us. They let us use their electricity when we do our outdoor movie. So well, there you go. Yeah, it's so. a really community-based library, which absolutely. I absolutely love. <laughs> Antonia, thank you so much for letting us come out here and learn all about the Katua Library. Anytime. I really appreciate it. No problem. My guest today is Antonia Stevens. She's the library director here at the Katua Library. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow with an all-new episode of Barnstable Today. For Barnstable Today, I'm Sarah Beale.